Hey guys, Mitch here at Film Labs. Our goal here today is to help you make good content. And that could be content on YouTube or on Twitch. Or, the best of all, content for your grandmother. Uh, regardless, making content, well, it's easy. So, why don't we go ahead and get started. So before we begin, we have to really break down what is content creation. What do you need and, well, where do you start? Now, there are so many different ways to make content. There's radio, there's video, there's painting, animation, illustration, podcasting, it's endless. But here at Film Labs, we focus on using one of these for content creation. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, like I was saying before, Film Labs is only going to focus on content that requires one of these. Now, cameras, well, they're one of the most commonly used tools in content creation. If you don't believe me, just check this out. So, that was a lot of really good content, and all of it was captured using a camera. So, what is this thing, how do we use it, and how does it work? Well, let's find out on this episode of The Film Labs. What the heck? Oh. Like, where? Where is this thing? Are you looking for this? Oh my gosh, where, where did you find that? In the box. That's us cameras. Right. Ooh. Don't worry, I got this. Your camera may not look like this one because there's so many different types of cameras. You probably even have one in your pocket. That's right, your cell phone could be a way to create content by using its camera. The beautiful thing is that most cameras nearly work the same. So let's break it down. Awesome, thank you, Anna. Well, in order to break this down, we gotta go back in time to what some consider the very first movie ever made, and even the very first camera. So, let's go check it out. The Brown Hay Garden Scene, a short film shot by French inventor Louis Le Prince. It's considered the earliest surviving motion picture by the Guinness Book of Records. Le Prince made the film using a single lens camera and Eastman's paper film at 12 frames per second. And, well, it runs for a total of 2.11 whole seconds. Wow, wasn't that amazing? That was an actual movie that was 2.11 seconds. Like, you don't see that on TV at all. No way, that was a movie. 
yes, that was a movie. And in fact, it's got an 88% as of today on Rotten Tomatoes, which is better than Battlefield Earth with John Travolta. What's a John Travolta? Is he on TikTok? Never mind. Let's just take a closer look at what's happening with these cameras. Okay, so to break down the camera, we gotta call in the professionals. We need some help. And luckily, we know just the people to call. It's our good friends over at the camera store. So why don't we just give them a call and see if they can help us out. Hey Camera Store guys, Hi. we're really excited to see you. Thanks for taking the time to tell us more about cameras. Hey The Film Labs, thanks for joining me here at The Camera Store. My name is Dave and I love photography and I love cameras. Now they've been around for a long time and they come in all different shapes and sizes. From small little point shoot cameras to big giant behemoths like this guy here. Now the cool thing with cameras is that they all basically do the same thing. They work off of shutter speed, aperture and ISO, which I'll get into in a little later. But check out this camera here. This is an old film camera. That's where everything started. Ooh. So what happens when I push the shutter button down for a brief moment the film is exposed to the light that we've captured. Think about all the light you see around it. It's all being bounced off of everything that we're looking at and it's being reflected to us. Now what the lens does is essentially it's a funnel of light collecting all this light, but it's scattered all over the place. So we need to be able to focus it somehow and that's where the lens comes into play. It focuses all that light onto a tiny film plane which records the light. Now film is a very light sensitive. We can't expose this to any other light otherwise we're going to ruin everything. So, we put it into this very dark box inside the camera here and we click the shutter button, it only exposes it for a brief moment of time so it doesn't overexpose what's happening. We don't want to ruin the film, so we have to watch our exposure. Wow, that's awesome. I, there's no way that I would have ever known that. Me either. Now it's very exciting to me when you do that, you don't know what you're capturing. Now this is sort of the problem with film is that it's an experiment. We don't know till after we've got the film developed into a negative and then printed. Basically what's happening is light is coming into the lens, hitting a mirror up into a prism and out the viewfinder where I can look through the lens itself and see exactly my framing and what I want to capture. Now there's some good parts and bad parts of shooting film. One thing, what happens is that we talked about all that scattered light that's everywhere in the world that we're trying to focus on. We need something to do that and that's where a lens comes into play. This is a lens just like your eyeglasses where it's helping you focus light onto a sensor or onto a very sensitive piece of film in the back of the camera. Now film is this, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before, it's this pretty cool stuff. You load this in the back of the camera where it's pitch black inside this camera and we're only going to expose it to light when we want to for as long as we need to to get the proper exposure. Now like I was mentioning before, all that scattered light needs to be focused on. So we take our time, we focus our light, and we expose it properly. When I'm at that moment of click, love that part. It's so exciting when you get that. But the problem is, I don't see it right away. I can't look at the back of the camera because I need to wait to get it developed in a lab and make my negatives and then make prints off of it and see if I've got a good shot or not. Now as much as I love old film cameras, they don't record any video. To record any kind of motion, we need to shoot at least 24 frames per second to get that kind of motion blur between frame after frame to kind of get that look. Now with this camera, I can do about one or two per second. There's no way I'm getting close to shooting any kind of video with a camera like this. And that's where digital cameras are very cool because they allow you to record video and stills all on the same piece of equipment. So here's where we step into the modern era of digital cameras. And this is very cool because with film, we never saw our images till after we took time to get it developed. With digital cameras, we can see things right away after we've taken the picture, and that really helps me speed up along my photography process because I can see if I've got the proper exposure or the proper look that I want without having to wait for the lab to develop my negatives. Now, there's nothing wrong with film. It's a different process altogether. Now, this is called a DSLR camera. This is a digital single lens reflex. And what that means is that I can change lenses on this. If I want a longer lens or a wider lens, I can buy a proper lens for that and make that work. Now what happens with this? It's the exact same process. Basically I'm taking all that scattered light that's everywhere, I'm collecting it through the lens, and I'm focusing it onto a digital sensor. So rather than a film strip, this is a digital sensor that doesn't move, but it just collects data. And sometimes a lot of data. This camera here is a 20 megapixel camera. This monster camera here is a 100 megapixel camera. This is insane. 
So I've talked about a lot of things today, but I've just scratched the surface. There is so much more to talk about when it comes to photography. Now, whether you're using an old film camera or the latest and greatest digital camera, there's so much to do and experiment with and explore when it comes to photography. I encourage you to go outside, take some pictures, whether it's just with a cell phone. Enjoy the whole practice of capturing stuff. Take a look at your world around you and what you want to capture, how you want to frame it, and how you can change things up with different shutter speeds, different apertures to get the look that you want. Thanks for joining me. Now go outside and start taking some photos. All right, Camera Store, thank you so much for all that information. We're going to take it and put it to the test. So to summarize, you have the light from a source like the sun. So. And the light bounces off the object or the person you're taking a picture of and back into the camera, like this. When light hits the film inside of the camera, it causes a chemical reaction. This is part of the process of making a picture. Perfect. Ah, uh, see the process is the same with the digital camera, except for all of the light is read by using little tiny light sensors, which then is stored as data. Or is it data? Regardless, it's different than a chemical reaction. Film Labs! Man, did you guys have to hit me that hard with the ball? We had to explain it to them. Uh, you're right, I did it for science. Yes, science. And we don't talk about me crying. So, that summarizes how a camera works. But you're probably wondering, well, what about the filmmaking? Well, every single time that the light hits the sensor or the piece of film, you're actually taking a photograph. And in front of us, we have a series of photos. To be exact, it's a photo of me eating an apple. Because an apple a day keeps the doctor away. But we're not doctors. An apple a day keeps the scientists away. Wait, but we don't want to go away. Uh, an apple a day keeps you healthy. Regardless, it's all about the photo. So, in filmmaking, it's really just a series of photos after each other to create motion. And right here, we have all these photographs, and they're one after another. So, if we were to play this, you would start to see a little bit of motion. And, well, we don't have 24 frames, but most commonly, movies are shot at 24 frames per second. Here we have all of these images being played one after another. As you can see, these are simple photos, but as soon as you start to play them, they start to create motion. That is how video works. And there you go. That is everything that you need to know for episode one at least, about the camera. On episode two, we're gonna start moving more into the settings of the camera, and we really hope to see you there. Well, my name is Mitch. And my name is Anna. And, and we're, we're the, the Film Labs. Film Labs! Film Labs. Woo! That was good. That was a good one. Think we got one more? If my glasses don't keep sweating. I think you got it. Oh man, I need something cool. Yeah, we gotta get you some water. Oh, okay. Yes. Ready? All right, so when it comes to breaking down what happens inside of a camera, well, you gotta. <laughs> uh... Okay, so in order to. Let's get a little bit of room tone. And action. They know almost everything about cameras. Nope, okay. Ooh, baby, you know. Okay. So. <laughs> Hold on. Inside of a camera. 
One more time. We'll do take a nice good long one. Nice good long one. Nice good long one. Nice good long one. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Rolling. Wow, that